and uh, I had her elder sister, Sultana, as one of my colleagues, and uh, she became was very fond of me. We were together working in the same office and uh, it was broadcasting. We were as a small team, you know. So she had a little uh, younger sister. She was in medical college, Delhi, a lady Harding. And she suggested, why not marry my uh, sist sister? So, well, I didn't take an, any notice. I laughed it out, you know, because uh, various considerations, you know. And, uh, but she persisted. She repeated it again on another occasion, you know. It so happened after partition. I came to Delhi. I was transferred to Delhi, All India Radio, New Delhi. And uh, immediately after partition, you know, riots were still going on. And she had finished her uh, uh, studies in Lady Harding. And uh, that very year. And her younger sister happened to be in Delhi on her way to Lahore from Aligarh. And we met again outside her college. And she said, Dugal, because you know, it's the times are out of giant trouble, riots going on. She being Muslim, she was in hostel, Lady Harding hostel. She said, Dugal, you should look after her. And she, otherwise also we, we knew each other. So we used to meet. So we started meeting, <coughs> and uh, on the 15th August, eve of 15th August, when the country became free, you know, we were together in Connaught Place, and uh, suddenly when the gongs and party, patriotic songs, because India was going to be to uh, be free next morning, you know. So we decided to marry. Do you remember that eve of independence evening? Uh, yeah, sure I do. And, uh, well, I have little to say about what... Uh, we had been... And no, we had known for some time each other, and we were also corresponding with each other. So we had a friendly relationship by then. So we just went out for a stroll, and we went to Jantar Mantar. It used to be a very nice place there in those days. And so we just were there, and and we happened to get closer to each other by then. So it was times were so different then. Um, but it sounds very romantic being in Jantamanta together on the moment of independence. Yeah, it was, and there were uh, there weren't many crowds inside then, and we were by ourselves most of the time, except that and the 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 guard would be looking at us why we are there, but we, we just overlooked him and 
continued to be with each other. And that's how we came, we got very close to each other. And, and as a Muslim in Delhi at that time, did you feel frightened? And no. You see, in those times, uh, this feeling of being different, the two religions, never occurred to me. Somehow, I had always had friends of, uh, no, I mean, non-Muslims in the college. In the, even at school level, I had friends who were non-Muslim. One was sick, and then another was Hindu, and the and some are Muslim, but you see this feeling of uh, alienation was not there. Somehow we we never experienced it. It seems such a change now. Now all the time, every time you have to see, so the, he's, that one is sick and this is Muslim. At every step you come across this, but it was so very different in those days. At least in the group we moved in, about. But, but you were, at the time in Lahore, Master Tara Singh was stirring up feeling between yes, yes. Sikhs and Muslims, and at the same time you were becoming very friendly with your future wife, who was a Muslim. Was there any problem within your community? No, no. We were sort of, the way you are brought up, you know. I was, I didn't have any communal, just, uh, tinge in my thinking, you know, I never, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I think I've narrated an incident in my autobiography, you know, for instance, I, all my, all the years that I was in All India Radio, I lived with the Muslim family as, as their paying guests, you know, and uh, we used to discuss politics and uh, sometime tempers were high, you know. They would say, why not Pakistan? Then I would say, why not Khalistan? If you can't trust Hindus, we, we can't trust Muslims, you know. We, we argued like this. But that was all at intellectual level, you know. So, What do you remember of the Independence Night? Independence Night? You were saying you were in Jantamanta and there was there was oh, celebrations. Yes, uh, yeah, Eve. Yeah. We we were together and we we sort of we knew each other and we were very close to each other. But that evening, maybe we were uh, we made up our mind to be together. You know. That was that. That is not the psychological. You, when the moment you take that decision, you know, that decision was probably uh, was taken at that moment. Otherwise, we were we knew each other. We were fond of each other, and we wanted we were we were uh, liked each other's company, and that was there. So your marriage was born at the independence moment. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. It, it was like that. And, uh, and did you face any problems from your family because you were marrying a non-Muslim? Uh, yes, I did. I, in fact, uh, we got married without informing them. It was... They came, it was a shock for them. They came to... I informed them later on and they were really shocked with it. But then as time passes one uh, gets adjusted and accepted it after quite some time. And were they shocked because you had chosen your own husband or shocked because you'd married outside your religion? Uh, it was more because I married outside my religion. And uh, well, uh, choosing a husband myself or any of us, that wasn't so much a problem, but this was a real problem, what we did. 
And do you think partition and the tensions that surrounded partition made that more difficult for your family to accept? Uh, yes, that also made it diff uh, difficult for them. And um, part of my family was here in India, and some had moved over to Pakistan. But uh, even in those times, the movement between uh, across the border wasn't difficult. They were coming over and meeting uh, um, my people here in India. And similarly, my relatives from India would visit them in Lahore. Things were still much uh, calmer in those days. And, and where was home for you? Was Lahore home or Delhi home? Uh, Delhi was uh, where I studied and uh, where I lived in my hostel. But my home was in Aligarh. My parent, mother was in Aligarh. My other sis younger sisters were in Aligarh. Mm. The married sister had gone to um, Pakistan because their husbands were employed in the government service and that, uh, that part of the government was in Pakistan. So they had she rather gone with, the, with their jobs. And shortly after you got married, you were in Jalanda working with abducted women. Yes. How did you get that post? Uh, Sara Bai, Mirdula Sara Bai was uh, also working for abducted women. And then she came to know that I was working there. So she would come and see me. And then she suggested that I work for the abducted women. She thought it would give me an uh, opportunity to uh, to see or decide for myself in case I have um, different uh, intentions. So it was more her idea that I worked there. And what was your work? What was your role? I was a doctor, so I looked after the inmates there, whatever their um, physical problems. But uh, those women also discussed with me about their emotional problems. What sort of stories did they tell you? Well, mostly the, the girls were brought there before they were sent over to the other side. And that, that was not uh, liked by them. They, they, nobody, I mean, uh, it is difficult for a woman to have married or lived with their, with their partner and then to give up and go and all together. So these were mainly Muslim women on their way back to, yeah. to Pakistan? Yeah, they were Muslim women who were being sent to Pakistan and before going there this was a um, this was a sort of in between stoppage for them. What sort of state were they in? How Are we talking about young women, old women? Young women, young women. No, there was no old woman amongst them. So those were the women who were living here, here with, uh, with the other uh, non-Muslims, or rather got married or got uh, fixed with them. And now they didn't want a change because, you see, they, what they feared was they won't be accepted well. So, and also they had emotional attachments also developed. So, so many of them would have been abducted women? Uh, mostly, mostly, yes. In fact, all of them, they were, they had been recovered by the, by the, uh, police or government agencies, uh, they search them out to send them back. And what was their, how did they feel about being sent back? They, they, they weren't willing to go, but uh, it was a difficult situation for them also, because uh, 
they i mean uh, they they had feelings for uh, their relatives there and the new feelings uh, att- emotional attachment they had developed here so it wasn't uh, pleasant for them it was really an uh, emotional torture to accept all this and i imagine that some of them would have been pregnant uh, yes yes some of them were did you arrange abortions no none none did the women ask you to no no they did it they didn't but for you as a as a young married woman how did you find doing that work Mm. Well, I I took it just as I would uh, be working uh, in in a in a um, uh, in a different situation. Also, for me, it wasn't. I took it as part of a job. I wasn't uh, involved emotionally about the, um, this. Uh, the situation but it must have been very difficult to remain detached when you were seeing so much anguish and suffering yes uh, it is so but then it uh, depends on your outlook also if uh, as a as a doctor you come across pain and um, suffering in patients so you have to have a uh, detached outlook it, it's strange you you you're talking about a detached outlook mm-hmm. and your husband's writings about partition which his short stories have a lot of reference to sexual violence and of course they're not detached they are committed they are they have a view he has also written about uh, his um, friendships and uh, his close relations in his village with uh, with the neighbors who with the non with muslim neighbors so somebody asked how come if you had such uh, friendly and uh, close relations how come the partition can happen <laughs> somebody asked him so from your time at jalandhar are there any particular individual cases of women that you remember mm. no i i i won't say any particular cases how big was it what was it what was it like the it was, this was a camp or a hospital this was a camp this was a camp uh, where the and it had uh, it was a camp with the barbed wire nobody else could just enter and leave how many women were there how long did they stay there were about 20 i would say and uh, most uh, most of the time they were there when i was working uh, none of the group had left by uh, in at that time they were um, sort of kept there to to give them time to adjust to w- what's happening to them and they were from delhi or from punjab or where they they no they were from different places um, mostly punjab maybe there were some one or two from delhi but they were mostly punjab and, and you say some of them had be- developed a sort of a, a sense of affection with their abductors oh yes oh yes that's why they were reluctant to go over they they definitely had and they wanted to stay back here because uh, they had a, they were uh, they left their abductors or or whatever those men were they they had developed attachments it it seems strange to imagine that a woman who'd been abducted would develop an attachment to her abductor how how would that happen you see uh, 
situation may uh, gives you that uh, chance uh, if you have to live it's better to have some sort of working relationship maybe uh, and by and by it can be, become close also but uh, initially you have to accept that you are here and you have to live with this person so why why create unpleasantness did they not have the choice to stay with their uh, new homes uh, they uh, they were in uh, the question of choice it doesn't come in because uh, they had uh, they hadn't gone there by themselves they were somehow re- uh, made to join the new household or or the man uh, so uh, firstly you accept if suppose you uh, have a uh, injury on your body or you have a or uh, any pain you learn to live with it and get over it rather than um, maximizing it and did they have the choice to stay in that new household the uh, it was not their choice but they had accepted the the, the situation and, and 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 agree to be there and live with and then by and by you develop a, an emotional attachment also and then they were rescued which is again they lost choice ah they were uh, forcibly rescued they were removed by uh, by the by the police and uh, the government they were they, were, they didn't have a choice and this was mridula sarabai scheme yeah it was her scheme it was her scheme did these women confide in you in jalanda uh, you see uh, they they knew that i had married a non muslim and for them um, i was a sort of a of a friend a person of uh, of um, having uh, the same sort of um, situation they they uh, they were friendly with me and uh, at that time did you think the rescuing was right and the fact that they were going to pakistan was right no i didn't think so i didn't think so uh, it was it was a, a very bad decision of the government to decide to do this uh, treating them like um, like uh, cattle or animals and just changing the hands of the owner it was a very bad decision did you say so at the time medula um, um, used to come and see me and even after was when we moved to delhi i kept uh, in touch with her because she had an organi- organization working for women well uh, i didn't uh, she won't listen to anything like this so no i didn't say much. how long did you spend at jalandhar at the camp uh, i was there for two years starting starting mm, from uh, when the camp was uh, uh, camp must have been there before uh, before my joining but uh, it was uh, 
in the beginning of my stay in Jalandhar. So that would be shortly after partition? Uh, yeah, shortly after partition. And how long did the women spend in the camp before they went back to Pakistan? I, I, after two years I, I left it because we were moving out. So I can't say how long... Were some of the women there for as long as two years in the camp, waiting to be reunited with their families? Yeah, two years or, or less, maybe. In between, some were taken back to Pakistan, and but uh, very few had left while I was there. And were there children there as well in the camp? No, there was. There were none. None was were born over there. But did the women have children by their abductors which they'd left behind? Uh, I can't say much, but I don't think... Uh, no, no, because uh, then I would have um, uh, learnt about their feeling um, of, a, of a child left behind. No. And had they been married before partition, or were they all young girls who'd never been married before? They were young girls who would... Uh, they might have been mar married before, that is another point, but uh, they were young girls. They m might have had a husband who was... Um, got rid of or killed or whatever. To that is possible. And you hear stories of girls who were subject to uh, repeated sexual abuse by many different men. Were, were this the case with some of these girls? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, none of them had this kind of... Because uh, the uh, abductor who takes or um, adopts one won't be uh, sharing it with uh, another man. And d did you get the impression that the abductors were men who were known to the women? Mm. Could be. No, I... I can't say much about that. Maybe. When you look back at your time at Jolanda, how do you feel about uh, the camp and your work with those women? And that was... Um, I worked there for a short uh, stretch of time. Mostly I was working in other camps also. There were refugee camps that I worked. Whereabouts were they? Uh, those were um, people who were uh, who had come over and yet had to be settled somewhere. So it was uh, people were living, trying to make things. And what was the name of the camp at Jalanda that you were based at? Uh, it was, uh, there, uh, there were two camps that I have worked. One was Gandhi camp and the other was Bhargav camp. Sorry, One was Gandhi camp and the other was Bhargav camp. But the, the Gandhi camp is the one that became the Gandhi Vanita ashram? Uh, maybe, probably. Because I went there about ten years ago Achha. and there were still three women there from Achha. 1947. I don't know whether they'd been there all the time, but they were still women who'd been uh -huh. recovered. I think in this case they were w women who'd been recovered from West Punjab, mm -hmm. who were living at the camp. Yeah. But y your husband's autobiography says that you then had difficulties in getting a job because you were a Muslim married to a Sikh. Uh, yes, I had difficulty. Um, I can't say because uh, I was accepted, I was given the job knowing that I was a Muslim, knowing that I married a Sikh. That was a known fact, accepted. But um, I had difficulty, uh, uh, rather I lost the job because then they thought that um, maybe because of uh, he was also suffering from that uh, impression of the government and uh, you were seen as pro-Pakistan or suspect, or what was what was the issue? Uh, 
मे बी सस्पेक्ट नॉट प्रो पाकिस्तान आई मीन इन दोज डेज द कम्युनिस्ट वर ऑल्सो बींग परसिक्यूटेड सो मे बी दे थॉट और बट नॉट बिकॉज आई वॉज मुस्लिम so it was more because your husband was seen as a leftist yeah yeah uh, when i uh, when we moved to delhi again i got a job here i worked there for uh, an year or so till they found out about the <laughs> past <laughs> report on me and then i was again asked to leave how did that make you feel well i was i i it was a very nice job because i had a good accommodation there and um, we were settled a nice place and a nice um, place to work and then suddenly i get a notice move out so that was that when you look back on those times what are your feelings now um, whatever was happening i somehow remain uh, didn't uh, i i was never hurt my feelings were never um as a my, as a young student i i um, studied and um, lived in hostels in mixed uh, communal uh, settings so uh, somehow i i never had that feeling of uh, alienation or or um, hatred or anything for the others so i never had any any hard time any hard feelings for did you ever think yourself about settling in pakistan did you ever think about a loyalty to pakistan rather than to india no never 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 ever uh, because pakistan as such i didn't belong to pakistan i i we are uh, our family was in up aligarh so we had not uh, not that attachment to pakistan as a, as a country did some of your family settle there yes my uh, sisters who were married to uh, to people working in the government they were settled there they are there they went to karachi uh, no lahore have you been to lahore to see them a number of times i've been there uh, at marriage occasions or even otherwise do you ever talk to your sisters about who made the right decision to stay or to go uh no they they are uh, while the uh, family had to accept but there was always that line that uh, divided us but uh, it's better to ignore and uh, be practical about it that's all thank you <laughs> i'm just going to go and see if i can talk a little bit to your husband why he's looking at his books mr dugal just one thing i wanted to ask you your, your wife has been talking about her work in jalandhar at the camp and how she had to deal with that as a professional and in a detached manner and yet a lot of your writing is about abducted women and about sexual violence yeah. and in your profession as a writer you were the opposite of being detached you were involved committed emotional about it no as as you know i was in all india radio jalandhar also <coughs> so i had I, i was deeply involved in what was happening in the abducted uh, uh, 
refugee camps, you know, and refugees, their problems. We used to interview them and so on, you know. So I was not at all sort of away from the problem. I was very much in it, you know. But, but whilst your wife had to be detached as a, as a medical professional... She has to. As a writer, you were, you were engaged, in a sense, in a different way with the issue of refugees. No, because, you know, the, the stories were all over, you know. If there is something uh, uh, to be recorded, it was there. You know, it would travel to me, you know. I mean, so I, I, I knew the sources from where to get the material, you know. For instance, the abducted women uh, camp. I was in touch with them and uh, the, uh, their registers, you know, I used to have all, all that with me. Did All India Radio try to reunite families? Pardon? Did All India Radio try to reunite divided families at that time? Did you broadcast messages from divided families? No, no. Families were there. We, I, I was, <coughs> as, as a professional, as a broadcaster, you know, very much in the thick of the, the this uh, agony, which people were undergoing, you know, divided homes, divided families, you know. So it was there. And the stories that you have written. Were they based on personal experience, on your wife's professional experiences? How did you get the... Not as much, because our friends, you know, and it was all in the air, you know. So, you recorded them, you know. And uh, what you write is, it's not a photographic representation, you know, it's your imagination. And... Uh, As I said, you know, it, it was all in the atmosphere. Uh, refugees were there, evacues were there, problems were there, we were solving them, you know. We, we were a, t a team of highly devoted professionals, officials in Jalandhar, you know, to build a new Punjab, you know. And we did our job, you know. I mean, saw to it that refugees were looked after and also saw to it that the vacuous went over to Pakistan unhurt, you know. That was our job, you know. If you, uh, I wonder, in my, not in my autobiography, there is, there is, yes, in my, I, it, it, no. uh, it is, I think, in the autobiography, it's uh, a refuge, uh, a vacuous, Caravan is le leaving Amritsar, you know, and I describe it, and I, uh, my sympathies are with them. So this is all, you know, the, 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 the way the, the people talk about them, you know. Uh, but the artist in me sympathizes with them. The, 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 this is how it is. Did you feel at the time that you were building a new Punjab? Pardon? Did you feel at the time that you were building a, a new Punjab? Yes, of course. We were a well, highly devoted team of officials, you know, in Punjab, refugee rehabilitation, Dr. M.S. Randhava, Director General Rehabilitation, you know, Sardar Tarlok Singh, Director General Rehabilitation, you know. We were <coughs> together every evening. We used to go to or walk together, you know, we discuss problems of peoples, you know, and how best we could serve them, you know. This is how it was, you know. The abducted women that your wife worked with, who were mainly she, she, mu Muslims... Yes, on the, used to, but she, but do, you th do you think it was right that they were sent back to Pakistan, Muslim women who had been abducted, who sometimes didn't want to go? No, she... I mean, I was... Uh, close to the refugee camp, abducted women's camp, you know. Even <clears throat> whatever they recorded, you know, they passed on to me as a broadcaster, you know, I made use of them. Then I was responsible for refugee messages, you know, for quite some time. What sort of messages? The, the refugees, you know, when they came, you know, they were, I mean, 
mother was separated from the son daughter was separated from the father you know so they would come to us with the messages they are, they would tell their tales you know suffering you know and we would broadcast okay here is your daughter name this she is looking for her father whose name is this they were separated at that juncture and so on you know so this is how we were as you said you know you you were in the thick of it you know so you knew what is happening around you know do you think it's fair to say that partition has been the defining theme of your writing yes it has gone into my writing you know because i i was as i said we lived it you know something happens to you something happens to your neighbor you know and if you are sensitive enough you imbibe it you know you suffer also and you as a creative writer you pass it on to your readers you know. this is how it is but the petition experience has been captured better in fiction than in any other form because there's not no it has it have, i would i wrote plays also i wrote lot of poetry it's in poetry it's it's in fiction that's it's there my i mean daily broadcast of five, four to five hours you know you all sorts of we used to do documentaries the way they lived their problems you know and we t- t- take the <coughs> our uh, recording u- uh, units to the villages refugee camps record them bring them back edit them broadcast in the evening you know this was uh, living with this tragedy you know this is how it is and this was all in punjabi well yes punjabi and hindi and in the not in english it was because it's no use doing it in english it's 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 the absolute model of public service broadcasting <laughs> yes we did we did our best you know and that explains why india could rehabilitate the refugees so soon and in pakistan refugees are still lying on the roads you know they couldn't do it you know in in punjab we are we had an excellent team you know randhawa tarlok singh then shri nagesh as commissioner and so on you know so we did, did a good job and we were devoted we wanted to sort of undo the suffering you know we were really involved in it you know thank you Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr Mrs Dougal, can I ask you what is your